Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge. I got tagged in a video series, and I was tagged by this gentleman. And the question was, I think, uh, uh, Really Big Monkey's channel, uh, Mr. Pearson, he's the one that I guess started or first I heard of it. But it was about the three knives. And so I've been asked to play along, so I'm going to do that. Okay, what was your first knife? Well, that's easy for me to remember. Because my first knife was a Barlow pocket knife. Very much like this one. Two blade. I was five, five and a half, something like that. And my grandfather had, uh, all the old men would sit and whittle, make little things. Um, I remember uh, one of the friends of my grandfather sitting there and whittling drawer pulls for his wife's kitchen drawers. Certain pattern he would carve and things like that. But I wanted to play along. And with a little trusting, grandfather would sit there with me sitting right in front of him and let me carve little things. And after I had sufficiently demonstrated uh, sufficient skill in it, to his liking, he took a cheap Barlow pocket knife and he snapped the tip off of it and rounded that over with a file. Because you couldn't stab yourself easily with that, without a point. It could stab, but it was a lot harder to do it. And you were more likely to just, you know, slip and stick yourself. Without it, it was kind of blunt-ended like a sheep's foot. Um, then he dulled it. And he told me, when I figured out how to sharpen it well enough to cut paper, he'd teach me how to really sharpen a knife. Well, I saw it on concrete, I saw it on bricks, I saw it on files, I saw it on everything I could figure out, trying to figure out how to make that knife sharp. And finally, after a couple of weeks, my grandmother took pity on me and showed me how to use sandpaper in the bottom of a coffee cup. And I finally got an edge that I could rather jaggedly slice paper. And with that, my grandfather took the time to show me how to sharpen a knife. And I haven't been without a knife ever since. I carried that Barlow until I was almost nine years old, and then I lost it on a fishing trip. And it really hurt my feelings I lost that knife. It was a cheap Barlow. wasn't $5 when he bought it, but the fact it had come for him. That's the reason I've got this one. This one looks a lot like it, although this one is not it. So that was my past knife. Back in that day, to me, a young man getting, being trusted with a knife was a rite of passage. The first time they trusted you with a pocket knife. The first time they trusted you to light a fire. The first time they trusted you to drive the car. Things like that. Those were rites of passage for a young man back in my day. And it did not, it wasn't lost to me how much trust they were putting in me. And I never screwed up where they had to take it away from me. I did some stupid stuff like all children do. But I never got where they had to take it away. So, that was my first knife. My present knife, the knife I carry more than anything in bushcraft, is the knife that's new. But this is a, well, it's kind of the son of the one I've been carrying for several years. The Master Wisdom prototype I had. William Collins made these up very recently to kind of honor me and our friendship. And this one's called a Blackbird. It's out of AEBL. Now this is my working knife, using knife, etc. So I figured the way this is supposed to go is, very first knife, what's your preferred knife today? That's this. Yes, I still love my prototype. No, I'm not getting rid of my prototype. Yes, I will still carry my prototype. But this one's got all the improvements, and it's become very near and dear to me in a very short amount of time. And so this is, um, I think, going to take care of the belt knife problem for quite a while. It's going to have to be something truly spectacular. I, I think we're going to have to start delving into lightsaber technology to beat this in my hands. So this is my knife now. Now, as to future knife? Well, that's a hard question. Uh, 
as many of you know, I grew up poor, and so I used just about every kind of knife. Uh, I use butcher knives, I use K bars, I use buoys, I use just whatever, you know, cheap knives, expensive knives. I never had a real expensive knife till I was grown. It was always something cheap. So I've developed a lot of knife skill because you've got to have the skills that the steel can't handle and know how to be gentle, how to whatever. And it makes you a better knife person but at the same time, you get to where just about anything I pick up, I can do. Can I clean fish with this? Absolutely. Can I skin a squirrel with it? Absolutely. Could I clean a moose with it? Absolutely. Would it be the perfect knife? No. But I've got the skills to use this. So that's got to dial into that, what knife and skill set am I trying to, would like to improve? In the last couple of months, I've been thinking real hard about something, to be honest with you. Uh, my good friend Dan Lutz. Now, Dan is a, a master trapper. He's out of Ohio, and I've spoke about him many times in my videos. But Dan has developed these little knives, and I've seen them. I've seen him use them. And I'm kind of intrigued by that, of wanting to try out those knives, because there is different as this knife was from a standard knife. With all of William's bevels and edges of Woodsman's grind, what Dan has come up with is a serious knife. And he's, he's coming from the mind of a trapper for processing game. So with this particular little knife, he can process just about anything, skin beaver or whatever. And in skinning and stuff, in my growing up, pelts were just about worthless. And so we didn't skin for the hide, we skint for the meat. And so I'm not what you'd call like a professional skinner. I just would make a cut and get the hide off of it. Whatever means it worked at the time, most field expedient, get it done, get down to the meat, get to butchering and get it in the pot. Um, but I'm learning a lot from Dan. And so I'm thinking that's the future knife I want. Uh, Dan has talked about making some knives. And if he does, I'm th I think that's the only future knife that I'm really thinking about, to be honest. I would like to get a set of those and probably some little leather case. Um, not going to be something for belt. This is going to be something special that I want to use for filleting fish. I want to see if I can process game with it. I want to see if I can learn to take pelts and hides from Dan to turn around and have something that's marketable. That's just one more skill in the woods that I need to learn. But that's where I'm going. That's my future knife is one of these sets of knives that Dan is trying to develop. Hate to be so vague about it, guys, but to be honest with you, I'm not one of those that follows every major knife maker um, or new design and that's such and such buck or whoever or Spyderco is bringing out some new model. I'm, I'm an old woodsman and I use knives. And I use knives that work. And so a lot of the new trendy stuff I just don't pay a lot of attention to because usually that's what it is, just a trend. And uh, I stick with what works for me. Now, I'm supposed to call out somebody as I understand this challenge. So, the three people that I am calling out in this video are, I'm challenging uh, Mike Denny to do a video on it. I'm challenging, this is going to be a fun one, Michael Ilya up yonder in Michigan. He has one of the biggest knife collections I've ever known about. So, yeah, I want to hear about how the knives got to be such a thing with him. And the third one is Randy Smith of stitchgear.com. Those are my three friends. And I'm tagging you guys. Y'all always tagging me, wanting me to do something. Well, tag your it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please leave any questions or comments. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.